Hello everyone, we are about to get started. Today we are going to talk about diffusion MR basics. Um, if you go open the agenda web page, there are several files to download, including the first hands-on. Um, there are nifty file, bval, bvac, and also there are two other data sets. One is here under the under the quality control. And then the last one is for accessibility artifact. So these three data sets may take a while to download. So when we start working on the, those data and before we have a hands-on session, you may make sure to have those data ready. Okay, let's get started. So today we are going to talk about diffusion and MRI and just an overview of the picture. If you look at the overview figure at, in the page, here's um, showing the flow we process DWI data. So um, the data we get from scanner are diffusion weighted image and the end product is those uh, chartography. So here the, the flow chart tells what's the processing flow. The first row is the methods, including pre-processing methods, including the methods we get the fiber orientation and also the approach we get fiber tracks and then isolate each white meter bundle. And in the first three weeks, um, the, the topic we covers only the last part of the um, fiber tracking, and also the whole bunch tracks and how to segment. So the, the target we cover is just started from the fifth file. So usually in the like week two or week three, we, we provided the fifth file, which included the fiber orientation and also the FA and the social fee or other matrices for each puzzle, allowing us to do fiber tracking. And today we are going to kind of the, um, go upstream to the uh, source of the data, which is the Nifty file or even the DICOM. But today we are go not going to use the DICOM because the DICOM data, we could just convert it to Nifty file. Um, so today we're going to talk about pre-processing step. So the pre-processing step located um, the, um, between the unprocessed DWI and the pre-processed DWI. So the data we got from scanner, if you download data from an MR scanner. Then the, those data would, would, would look like something like the first one may have distortion, may have some um, artifacts that would need some processing. I look at some checks here on uh, the hands-on identifying sampling scheme. Um, I will talk, I will see if I can cover it later. The hands-on, I think that's not working for me. Okay. See if I can, um, so did you mean that you cannot download the data here? So no, if you click the, on the link uh, here, you should be able to download the data. Um, I just see like some message on the chat. And if you still have problems, um, maybe the, um, other people could comment on how we could solve it. So I will just continue here. Um, hopefully we can solve it during the hands-on part. So that another processing pipeline today we're going to cover is the started from Nifty or DICOM, and then we convert to DSS Studios format, which we call the SRC format, and the way is the SRC.gzip. And then once we process it, we will save to another new SRC file or either just head straight to reconstruction and then get the fifth file. So the file format flow is like this. From the NFT, we could just convert it to SRC and then and then feeding through the DSS Studio pipeline. Still there are other approach. You can use other tools to pre-process pre the data to another new NFT file. And then from here, we also get converted to SRC. Um, 
And but today's raw, we will start it from Nifty file, convert it to SRC. Here is still unprocessed DWI. And then we will have uh, correction to things that handles uh, different distortion and artifact and then save to another new SRC. Well, it, there's a question about DWI and ETI. Um, in fact, there's a lot of confusion, even in the community, people may say, uh, I acquired DTI, but it may, it's not a precise way to say it. And DWI stands for diffusion weighted image. So it's, it's a kind of uh, MRI modality with additional diffusion contrast. So that's a definition of diffusion weighted image, just like T1 weighted image, that's MR image with T1 weighted or T2 weighted image is uh, MR image with T2 weighted and DWI is diffusion weighted. So there is additional contrast, confirm diffusion, which we'll cover today later. Um, and the DTI, I would say DTI is essentially a modeling method. So if you have a DWI, how do you model it to get um, in information you, you are interested in. So for DWI, it's fitting diffusion weighted image with a tensor model. So it's a modeling methods. Uh, the fitting process give you the fabrication and the source of fee and also the facilities which we will mention um, next week. But sometimes you may heard of people say, oh, I acquired DTI. This usually implies that they use maybe a uh, low uh, DTI D value. So it's not very high D value and maybe only 30 or 60 directions. Um, it's not a wrong way to, to, to set in that, uh, to say I acquired DTI, but it's not a precise way. A precise way is like I acquired DWI with certain B value and B back, and I process a DWI or model a DWI using diffusion tensor. And that's the, the, the whole essence of the uh, DTI, which is diffusion tensor imaging. Um, but I agree that there could be a lot of confusion and sometimes even uh, experts use that interchangeably. So let's uh, have a quick view on the handsome session part. Once you download the data, you would get the wrong one, subject one, wrong one. This data is from an open data set on open neural. Um, the good, the interesting thing about this data set is that they have two sets of data. One is the subjects now uh, without head movement. And the second data set is the same subject with deliberate head, head movement. So we could observe how motion contribute to artifact or distortion or any kind of problem, like signal dropout. And then in the data set, there are three key components here, as I mentioned, listed on the overview. There are a 4D DWI volume. So it's a multiple 3D DWI, and each of the DWI is acquired by a unique diffusion sampling. So you end up with a four dimension. So the three dimension is just like a regular MRI three dimensional space. And the additional dimension is a diffusion sampling. So you can sample at a certain directions. Uh, there could be 30 directions, 40 directions, 60 directions. Uh, and that constitute the additional uh, dimension. And that was 40. And also another important information is the B table. B table is the great diffusion gradient table that tells um, a pipeline what's the orientation and magnitude of the diffusion sampling. So those two in information are um, the most important and you critical information used in processing. So if you don't have B table and only have 4D data, right, we still cannot process it because we don't know what's the orientation of the diffusion sampling or the magnitude. So those are the three, two important information. Including here, if you see the downloaded file, the nifty file is the 4D DWI. And then there another two files are the B table. One is the B value, 
which is the magnitude of the diffusion sensitization. And the B vet is the orientation. So it's the it's a unit vector telling us what's the orientation of the diffusion sampling. So if you have this three file, you start DSS Studio, open, click on step T1, open source image. So we are going to convert Nifty file BBL, BVAC into SSRC that's located at step T1. Click on it and then set that the Nifty file. DSS Studio will try to find the corresponding BVAL BVAC. So you will see the B value, which is the BVAL, this thing here, and the BVAC is including BX, BY, BZ. That's the orientation vector listed here. Sometimes DSS Studio may not be able to find it. That if that's a case, you can still load it manually by open BVAL, and then set that your BVAL file, for example, is here. So BVAL file is in fact a test file with number in it, loaded it, and you will list the BVAL here. And then load the BVAC, then BVAC appears here. So this process is kind of matching DWI with each of the acquisition uh, diffusion gradient sampling. So it would be one, one one to one match. So for this 40 Nifty file, it has a total of 100 um, DWI volume. Each of them will have its corresponding magnitude of the diffusion sampling and the orientation. And click OK, then DSS Studio will start processing it and then generate a file and end it with SRC. So I'm going to list it here. The file will look like this one. It may take a while, like several minutes, depending on the, your reading speed. And once you generate this file, you may wait until it generated, but I can open it here in step T2 reconstruction. Once you reconstruct the file, and you can open the file you generated, and DSS Studio will bring out another interface here. So it may take a while to generate it. And also I provided the command line. You can use the command line to generate. The command line here is just assign what's the Nifty file into source and then the BVAL and BVAC and specify what's the output. The output is here and the with SRC that you did. This, this that should be very straightforward. And once you've generated the SRC file, then you can open it in step T2, then DSS Studio will bring up the construction interface. So more, more, for more detail about the construction method, that's the topic of the next week. And for this week, we will focus on how to check the quality and how to correct for artifact and distortion. So the first step I would like you to do is to click here to check your detail by data. Click on this tab and then DSS Studio will show the content of the SRC file, which include the BVAL, BVAC, and each corresponding volume. So you can see here, if you click on different DWI volume, it will show what's the 3D DWI image required. And then you, can, you may notice that for most of the acquisition, there are something without diffusion weighted Let's call B0. B0 means that we, did, we, we didn't turn on diffusion gradient, so the gradient magnitude um, and all things are zero. And this thing is like kind of without diffusion weighted. And then once we turn on diffusion gradient, then there is different contrast coming in. So that's why we say it's DWI because it's just like, adding, applying additional diffusion weighted. So you can see some bright spots gone and then it has different, different comes of coming then. So while you check it, well, there's a question about why we have several B0. Um, one reason is that uh, some tools would like you to have several B0. So if there are head motion, um, the tool could align based on the B0. 
because if your contrast is very different, the, uh, the alignment is much more challenging. So some tools, they may prefer you to acquire a B0 for every 10 or 20 DWI. But um, nowadays, most of the tools are very robust. So you don't need to, really need to have several B0 because it's just a waste of time. Um, they still could acquire uh, or the alignment pretty well and try to correct it. Or either you just acquire another B0 for, for um, the entire data set, that's enough. Um, don't really need to acquire several of them. So once you get, check out this one, I would like to mention how these things work. Um, so here it shows that we, we call it sequence diagram. That's the design of the sequence that acquires the DWI. And so to understand how diffusion model works, um, there's a very quick way to understand it. You don't really need to understand all the sequence and all the pulse gradient, how it works. You need one thing you need to just need to know is diffusion weighted image. It's just like um, T1 weighted image and T2 weighted image. It's a kind of MRI with additional weighting. So that's why it's called diffusion weighted. So if you recall, if you have taken course about MRI, when they mentioned that T2 weighted or T1 weighted, they mentioned that it's a regular MRI, which is showing the, uh, the amount of water in the brain. And then there is additional contrast that called T1 contrast or T2 contrast, kind of modulating the signal intensity, dropping it. Um, so if you have T2 weighted, it will drop the signal based on the, T, the, the T2 time. Um, T1 weighted then is attenuating the signal or dropping the, T, the signal adding additional contrasts. Similar things here happens here for diffusion weighted image. What you need really need to know is, is an MRI that with a additional design so that the contrast is adding on top of it. So it's showing here, it's showing that like a picture here, the top one is a B0. B0 is, is essentially a T2 weighted image. It's not so different from a T2 weighted image. And what it shows is that the high intensity, if you switch to the first one, first volume, if you see here, the high intensity part of those water location in the ventricle. And then once you turn on something we call the diffusion sensitization gradient, that makes the, diffusion, the signal attenuates based on diffusion. So if you turn on the diffusion, you may see that those high intensity spots is gone because those locations have free water diffusion. It's why like the, the imaging process, those intensity would just attenuate with dropping due to diffusion. So that's why it's called diffusion weighted. That means if there are diffusion, then the signal will attenuate more than the other location. So if it's just quick comparison between the first one and the second one, you will see that some location, the signal stay, whereas some location, the signal drop a lot. And that tells you where the diffusion is happening at each location. So for example, in the ventricle, there's a lot of dropping. That means that the diffusion is kind of free diffuse everywhere. So that's why we when we apply diffusion gradient, those signal dropping. But at some location like the gray matter, where although there are still water content, but the water being trapped between axons or between neurons, it's not like freely diffusing at all different locations. So if you, just like the one I pointed here, you will see that the intensity is not dropped that much, especially in the white matter, even though there are still signal coming in, very low signal coming in, but when you turn on the diffusion gradient, it doesn't really drop in the signal. So that could tell you that the diffusion over there is being restricted. So that's how the diffusion of my works is like adding on regular my sequence with additional diffusion sensitization gradient. And then based on how the signal uh, dropping, we could model it. 
and then calculate something called diffusivity that tells us how fast the water diffuses. So as shown here, before we turn on diffusion gradient, which is the B0 is zero, then we have a high intensity. Then when we turn on diffusion gradient, the signal will drop. And depending on whether it's being restricted or not, let me zoom in here. Dep depending on whether the, the biological tissue is restricting the water or just not restricting the water, if not restricting, the, the signal will drop exponentially. And then for the restricted water, the dropping may be kind of be hindered due to the uh, tissue environment. And from this signal behavior, we could model it and then get, uh, get the information we wanted here. So just a recap here, diffusion MRI, uh, we could understand it as a regular MRI ecosystem, mostly spin echo, but here could be different like stimulated echo or even gradient echo and adding on top of it, additional diffusion sensitization. So it's like making this MRI sensitive to diffusion and the signal will be weighted by diffusion. That's why you call it DWI, diffusion weighting image. So, and then there are additional diffusion contrasts created, but how it created is by dropping the signals. So key information here is like, it's not like we, we have a very strong diffusion sensitization that, than this good because like, if we drop the signal that go too much, you won't get enough as an R and then the modeling may fail. And on the other hand, if the diffusion sensitization is not uh, strong enough, you may not have enough diffusion contrast and then the, all the data where I mean looks very similar to the B0. And in that sense, it's just like this, we didn't have diffusion sensitization and the model will also fail. So there's more like a trade-off between how you turn on a strong diffusion sensitization or just have a low diffusion sensitization. Usually you need to have a three spot. The next one is like how we quantify diffusion sensitization. So the, the term, we may heard about from time to time something called B value. So B value is kind of a summary of value that summarize how strong the sensitization is. Higher the value, then there's a strong diffusion sensitization. For example, if uh, a high B value, maybe 3,000 or 4,000. And at that range, if you turn on the diffusion, that there will be a strong uh, signal, signal attenuation. So the signal may drop a lot depending on diffusion, different diffusion condition. Um, but in that level, the dropping is pretty large. That means uh, we have a very strong sensitization to the diffusion. And also the B-Vagus orientation, those sensitization is orientationally sensitive. So we, was, we can turn on the diffusion sampling, maybe at the X direction, Y or Z or any orientation, and then to detect the diffusion over different locate or orientation. So that's important. And that's how we get the fiber orientation because in the white meter, we know some tracks align at certain different location. And as a result, the diffusion property may be different from different orientation. By turning on diffusion sensitization at different location, at different orientation, then we could tell what where those fiber tracks are and how they oriented. So to take an observation here, first of all, you need to do, compare the B0 and the one with diffusion weighted. Then that tells you where are the large diffusion, best diffusion located. And the second is that if you look at different DWI, they have the same sensitization, but at different orientation, then you see the signal, kind of the contrast coming up within the white meter. So you see here, when we turn on different orientation compared to different orientation, then the contrast change quite a lot in the white meter. That means in the white matter, the orientation of diffusion is pretty different. So when you have different orientation, the contrast changing over there. But when in the white matter, it doesn't really change. 
because it doesn't really have an orientation over there. In the gray matter, there's such neuron layers. There's not like a lot of fiber structures or the water being restricted isotropically. So when you apply different orientation of the, uh, the diffusion sense of tidal is not changing. But when in a, in a white matter, when you turn on different orientation, then you show that the contrast comes down. So here, maybe the Cox Carlson. And in this direction, so here you see this infusion sensitization turn on largely at the Y location. So sensitization is going here. And you will see here the, the contrast giving a high, less attenuation, the signal is higher. That's because the fiber is going to from the left to right and it's restricting diffusion in the Y, then that's why signal kind of stay over there. Compared with the other, it's not turning on a lot of on the wide direction, so this drop. So even if you look at this deep B vector and compare with the contract, you could tell whether the, the orientation is, is correct or not. Sometimes the B table may be flipped, and then we want to check it, you could use the, the same. So for example, here in this number six, turn on mostly B Y, then the fiber that goes either um, in the x direction or z direction, as long as it is, is perpendicular to the y orientation, then that location should have a higher signal. I see a question is what's the single and multi-shell data? So that's, that's the things we come in from the NASA is a sampling scheme. So in, in earlier days, what usually we require is just one B value. That means that like here, maybe we just require one, B0 and the number num zero B value 700 and use all of them the to model the tensor. So usually we call this single shell because I mean, if you put this B, vac B value and then the B vector in the space, we call it the diffusion sampling space, it may look like a shell. It's like the same value, but located on different location. Then it looks like this one. So the B0 may be at the center. The 700s may at different orientation would look like a sphere in 3D and they look like a shell. So we call it a single shell. So DTI acquisition is essentially just a single shell. Um, and multi-shell means that you have dif different B value. So if you have a B value that's higher, one B value is lower, if you plot the location of the sampling in the 3D space, then it look at like a two shell. So for example, the data set we are having here, there are 701 and a B value of 2000. So if you use like a scatter plot, 3D scatter plot, the, the 2000 at different location may look like a big sphere. And the 700 at different location may look like a smaller sphere. The two sphere constitute a multi-shell. So you may heard of the term, a single shell, that means one B value at all different location. Multi-shell, two or three or even four or five B value at multiple direction. Still, there are something called diffusion spectrum imaging. It's not look like a shell, but it's a more like a continuous sampling of different, uh, a series of B value with uh, all different kind of location and try to have a more coverage, equal coverage um, in the diffusion sampling space. Then you may, we call it a weak skin or the DSI position. So by looking at the, this DB table, you could tell which one is single shell, which one is, is multi-shell. Now we go, we heading to the second part of today's course is quality check. And as the data set we provided the wrong two is the same subject and with deliberate head movement. So we could see how the movement induced the artifact here. Similarly, we can usually convert the DWI, the NFT file to the SRC file. And open this file in step T1. 
Once you loaded it, then DSS Studio will find its corresponding bbar back, and then click OK. Then you generate another SRC file. Once you generate it, you can open it, it as the T2. And here, the first thing you may look, you could notice is like in this mask creation map, there are some blurring because this map is like a sum of all the DWI just to allow you to draw a mask. There are some blurring that, will, that means that maybe the brand location have moved during the acquisition. And when you click on the checking the raw DWI, what usually did this like you lower the signal, give it more contrast, and you can go through each of them. And you will see how brand location change over time. They will confirm kind of a head, head movement. And the, the problem comes with head movement. It's not just like the location being different. What you, you need to do is check, click on this search to views button and then check the DWI. When there is head movement, sometimes you come with something called like a signal dropout. So here it's like during the acquisition process, the head movement will end up with some signal dropout or zigzag pattern appear on, especially on the sagittal or chrono slide. So you go through here, if you see like a zigzag pattern coming down, then usually it's due to um, motion during the scan. So this is a quick way. You should turn on sagittal or chrono view, quickly going through each of the slides and you see that the, 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 the brand location is kind of moving during the scan. And then the, we did come with signal dropout or either there is like the zigzag movement. So even if you have like a motion correction routine, it still cannot recover those signal dropping out or either those zigzag movement. So that's important because say like a lot of people may think, okay, we if we have motion correction, then the data will be as good as non-motion one. But in fact, it's not true. Uh, most of the motion may induce a substantial quality decrease that may not be recoverable. And I would mention how to identify those using the quality control routine in DSS Studio. And still, you may need to drop some data if the motion is pretty large. I see a question about how does, does multi-shell data has a balance between high and low sensitivity? Yes. So the, the purpose of having a multi-show is the higher and lower. It's kind of the um, detecting different bandwidth of the diffusion. So higher B value may be more sensitive to um, restricted diffusion. And restricted diffusion is closely related to like myelination, SNL uh, integrity. So for detecting neuronal change, high B value is is more important. Low B value is not that sensitive to restricted diffusion, um, but it will be useful for detecting like uh, tissue edema. Like we call it like um, uh, cytotoxic edema. Then the low B value will be important. For me, it's more like different B value is detecting different bandwidth. Um, uh, and the better strategy you try to cover all different bandwidths of the diffusion. Um, using either two or three. And that's why multi show uh, is kind of replacing single show now. And the second question better SNR than it. SNR is, of course, lower. As I mentioned, higher diffusion sets of tidal addition or higher B value will drop signal more. But the key for diffusion and more is the diffusion contrast not only the diffusion signal itself. So we have two things. One is the SNR. If the SNR is just too bad or too horrible, you essentially cannot analyze anything. But on the other hand, if you don't have enough, enough contrast, that means that the data you acquire is just like having no diffusion. So that's like a balance between the contrast you want to get 
and the remaining SNR, whether it's enough to for processing. So involve a, a, a careful design on how to balance it. So, and there is a page in, on this uh, studio website about how to acquire more R. I have a more detailed discussion about a problem, a challenge in current uh, multi-shell acquisition. So we can take a little bit. So we just check the motion artifacts and you need to look at the sagittal slice or chrono slide to see the signal dropout. Now, this one is the most common and most troublesome. You need to have a strategy to drop those with, prob with problematic uh, quality. And the second one is something we call AD distortion. So AD distortion happens when we turn on this diffusion sensitization gradient. So if there is a strong gradient turning on and off, there will be induced current. And the induced current here we call it eddy current may propagate through the acquisition. And then what it end up with is it would, the image may show being dislocated. It's a more like a, a deformation, even though it's the linear. So example here showing is like if you look at all the DWI, the brain may not may look like being shearing deformed, deformed during the process. Or either the brain may look like be moved a little bit. So we can see if we can find the AB current artifact. What we are going to look at is the first one without head movement, because sometimes the AD current distortion may go with motion. So if you have a, such a moving and also have like eddy current up distortion at the same time, sometimes they may appear like the brain being dislocated altogether, very hard to tell. So here we do get the one without motion, that's the wrong one. If you check in detail about the wrong one data, which the subject does not move, but the brain still looks like being shifting in the wide direction. So you see here, if you quick, go quickly going through. And then the, and one typical finding would be, if you have a low B value, the shifting is not that much because the indu induced current is not big. But when you go to the higher B value, you see the shifting be becomes more substantial here. That's because it is involved a greater diffusion gradient and thus more induced current. And more induced current induce more, we call it, it would be look like we're moving or deformed during the process. And that also depends on the sequence. So as shown that the picture here, some sequence may look like the brain being moved, shifting, deformed shifting in certain different location. And after we correct it, we hope to get something like this one, something being stand still, not affected by this eddy current. So the reason why it looked like different is like at different, for each of the data, right? Because it turned on different sensitization at different orientation. So the induced current may be different depending on the head coil geometry. And that's why different data by may have different deformation here caused by the eddy current. And the solution to it is try to align each with the B0 or all with each other. Different tool has different strategy, but most of them, depending on, first of all, estimate this kind of linear deformation. Usually the eddy current deformation cause here is linear, maybe shifting, maybe shearing at certain location. First step is to estimate what's the linear transform between each DW with the actual brain location and then apply the inverse of the transform and try to bring it back. So the, the, the solution is pretty straightforward because the eddy current induced deformation or movement or translocation is linear, estimate it and bring it back. So to do this one in DSS Studio, what you can do is, like, for example, for, for this wrong one, you can go to the correction and click edit. This step will take like 20 minutes 
or even more depending on your computer. And then the tool used here is FSOS Eddy. So there's a studio kind of um, having like a wrapper here, you would relay the call to FSR AD and then correct the data. So if you click on it, it may take a while. Um, but here I already done it before. So it just loaded the process result. So you can see here after AD correction, the brain is not like moving a lot. So you see here the contour stays. So I can make a comparison by opening the one without. So this one is before. You see here, the brain contours kind of jumping up and down. It's not like the, such a brain is like moving like this. It's such a, the brain actually stands still because if you look at this sagittal view, there's not a lot of signal dropout or zigzag pattern due to motion. And after AD correction, you see the brain location is a standstill. So this also have a quality check of whether the AD runs okay in your data or not. So simple solution, you can just click correction AD. <coughs> and the command line is provided here. You can also do it in command line and then save it as a new SRC file. So let me try the question, does DSI support GPU for AD correction? Yes, but that's only for Windows version. In um, Mac version, still there's no solution for GPU AD, as far as I know. For the Linux, and you can use FSL's uh, AD, then also GPU supported. So the answer would be yes, but not for Mac. Second question, AD correction with DSS Studio is very fast on my computer. Does so that mean it's not performed correctly? Um, the reason it's, it's faster is the compiled version is different from the vanilla version of the FSL. The original version of the FSL compilation, they only use GPU but not use multi-CPU. And the version included in DSS Studio is a new com compile of the source code from FSL, but adding on top of it, uh, we have multi-CPU turning on and also GPU turning on, so that's why it's much faster. The entire process and the source code is, is identical. Do I install FSL separately to be able to run it? In Windows, no. Um, in the DSS Studio package, if, once you download it, DSS Studio package will ship with uh, a specific compiler we call Tiny FSL. So here in the GitHub, repository, I have also released the modification to make all this possible. So this is a, a small FSL version shipped with DSS Studio and still carry the original FSL license that is free for academic usage. And that package, including the AD and top out, but it's slightly different in terms of the uh, programming part, not the processing. The processing step are all the same. The results should be very close, almost identical to the original FSR version. The only difference is that we turn on multi CPU. So we have multi core and also GPU turning on at the same time. So it's much faster. Okay, this question I haven't mentioned the top up. Top up is for another correction that's the susceptibility artifact. So for top up AD is we apply susceptibility artifact correction first before feeding that correction into AD. So there's another, there's another artifact in addition to AD distortion that we call the susceptibility distortion. This one is more ugly as you see here. This, um, the artifact with distort brain surface usually at the prefrontal, you see here, look like the brain being crushed 
or bulged depending on the phase encoding direction. Here, the phase encoding direction is the Y direction. And the reason for this happening is some brain tissue, if they are air tissue interface, those tissue sends the um, magnet, the, the magnitude of B0 may be different. So it's that like the sensing the big magnetic field, the ability to sense a um, magnetic field is different at certain location. Due to different sensing, we call it sensibility, then those phase encoding will, will go wrong and the location of those fossils may be displaced, may be displaced at that location. And it creates two problems. One is distortion, as you see here, the brain be distorted, or that you create an artifact. I hear that uh, the auditory canal due to the tissue air interface, there, there will be like a, a high intensity things coming up. And we can identify it here. If you look at the wrong one, you see here the, the brain being barged anterior. In the auditory, auditory canal, there's some like an artifact here. So usually you look at two parts. One is the tip frontal, prefrontal, or the auditory canal. So, so let's have a deeper check using the, the third data supply today. One is the DWI. You can use this one and the BWB back to create a RC file. And then you may notice this one additional file coming up. Let's call it uh, PA. We stand for posterior to anterior. That means uh, the phase encoding direction is be different. For most of the sequence when they when we acquire data, right, the, the phase encoding direction is from anterior to posterior. We may label it as AP. And to correct for this sensibility artifact, the solution we use here is to correct a different distortion direction. It's more like you have a distortion that goes in one direction. And when we change the phase encoding direction, the distortion may go the other way around. So by combining those two information from these two opposite distortion, then we will bring things back. So that's why there is additional acquisition. So without this one, we have we cannot, we almost cannot do anything, even though there are two or try to handle it. But still, with most of the sequence, we would need. Uh, something we call reverse phase encoding. And that will tell us that the opposite way of the distortion allows us to bring it back. So let's have a, a quick check of this data to get a better idea of what it is and how it works. First of all, you download the data. That's the tells by acquisition multiband, create the SRC file using the just the same step T1, Open this one. This is called the position multiband, not the PA one. This one only has B0. So open this one and the DSS2 will bring the B or B back. Click OK, then you generate the SRC file. So this SRC file here, first of all, we can check out what the susceptibility artifact is. First of all, frontal. You see here the brain being like deformed here in the prefrontal location. It's more like the brain being crushed from anterior to posterior. So that's one way to tell whether it's like from anterior to posterior. But sometimes that may not be very easy. You another way to look at it is look at the auditor canal. There's also like this one. If we check the rope DWI, usually we look at the B0. See here, most some part of it, especially here, you will see this artifact at the back. And that's one way to tell where is the, the face encoding from anterior to posterior. So if we reverse this face encoding and acquire the B0, and that's what we get from this, is called the uh, P to A, posterior to anterior. What you could do is we could check this one using tools view image. And 
And then let's see how it looks different here. So this one is also P0, but using a different opposite face encoding direction. So you see here, the artifact goes to another direction if you compare with this one. Roughly at the same location, hopefully. Maybe here. So one goes posterior, one goes anterior. Even the eyeball size is being different. So it's more like if we have a distortion that's nonlinear caused by this something called susceptibility artifact, usually it's very local at the auditory canal or prefrontal. It's so that the brain being crushed at some location. And the solution to it is acquire a reverse phase encoding P0 at the opposite direction. So in, this, in that acquisition, the distortion will go to the opposite direction. And then we could use a computation tool in episode called top up to bring both back. So as shown here, one's go to, this one's one direction and then the opposite and the correction goes it back. So the processing here, once you, we open this SRC file, the correction is under correction tapa AD. The reason this tapa AD is that usually after we have tapa, we also need an AD. So we combine those two together, click on this one, and then it will ask you to supply the reverse phase, including the NFT or SRC file, and then bring the things back. So it's seen here. I already did it before. So DSS Studio would load the default result. So just look at the eyeball is backing to like a ball shape here. And the, the frontal is like com coming back. It's not like a lot crush and at the prefrontal. So you can try this in your computer. It may take like 20 minutes to 30 minutes. But and the only thing you need to supply is uh, the up the reverse face encoding B0, and then the DSS Studio handle the work. And if you don't have reverse face encoding B0, then the only thing you can do is edit. Um, so there's two corrections mentioned here. Still, there is another motion correction provided in DSS Studio, and just for correcting the motion, because as some data set we cannot apply AD. There's a lot of restriction on FSL's AD. It doesn't work on uh, even some shell, single shell data set. You don't have enough sampling direction. FSL AD won't let you uh, up work on it. And if both two doesn't work out, then there's like a backup choice provided in DSS Studio. So I see a question, do we need to go top of ID again and again ID? No, because I, if you use here, then after top up, this studio will continue with ID. So it's all packaged all together. I see a question, if what we have full AP and PA data, rather than just P0, that's a good question. Just uh, for us to continue. So the last part of the text is a summary of what condition here. The first one is if you don't have, you just have DWI without reverse phase encoding, then you just create SRC and then apply ID and that's it. Because we don't have reverse phase encoding, there's no way we can do top up. Yet there are solutions available. They try to use T1. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but there's definitely possible solution. Um, the way to do it is just to create um, a, a kind of non-distorted image to the brain, but for most of the case, there's no way to do top up. <coughs> Second case is the most common and also the example here, the reverse phase encoding, just a B0, one B0 image. Then the step you need to do is first of all, create SRC and then have the reverse phase B0 as a nifty file, which you, just like we downloaded. And then you can apply top up and AD, which is located step T2, or either the common lines here. The common line is like 
using like a reverse PE and then assign the file name. And the question here I just saw is that how about we have the full DWI acquired as reverse PE? So still another way is like not just one P0 with reverse phase encoding, we have more like a duplicated DWI for uh, the 4D acquisition volume, but the entire with entire reverse phase encoding. Then the way to do it is similar, but here instead of creating just one nifty file, we need to create the SRC file from the reverse PE and then follow the same. And usually for the reverse phase encoding DWI, where I create the SRC file, I would rename it as R SRC, R with additional R to tell the difference. And you can still set that in DSS Studio. And this has to bring both back. Well, on Mac, you can still do it, but there's no GPU support. That means it's much slower. Um, but DSS Studio's tiny FSL, which I mentioned, will still use a multi CPU core. So it would be faster than the vanilla version of the FSL on Mac. So the answer is mm, we can still do it on Mac, but it's slower. Um, it will still work. Can you demonstrate DWI with reverse PE? Yes, I can demonstrate uh, here. See if I can find the data set. Well, essentially it's very, it's almost identical. First that you need to create um, SRC file for both. And then open one, one of the SRC just like we did here. And then click correction. Top of AD and then set that another SRC and that's it. Um, another question, should we always acquire the reverse P image? Yes and yes. Um, at least just one P0, it's just type like 10 seconds or 20 seconds because most of the publication now would have this. So if you don't have this as much, um, it, it it means that you, you won't be able to handle that problem, even though it only affects the prefrontal or the lower temporal lobe. Um, but it's still um, something that's necessary right now. Maybe 10 years ago, 10 years ago, a lot of studies not doing that. But nowadays, most papers will have it. So you, you need, really need to consider having it. Still, if your data set is, is not having the reverse phase encoding, the strategy I have is that at least we have Eddie. And then for the study, I will have a statement say maybe the finding or the results is not located under inferior temporal or prefrontal. Um, so we could reasonably ignore the effect of susceptibility at the back. So it's like a caveat to tell to silence the mouth of reviewers saying that, well, these are, we cannot correct for the susceptibility artifact because we don't have reverse phase encoding, but it doesn't matter because our study result doesn't involve those location and that's it. But if unfortunately your study is looking at a prefrontal or inferior, inferior temporal lobe, and if you don't have reverse phase encoding, then it's really hard for you to justify not correcting for the distortion over there. But for most of the study, I think that if you don't correct for those susceptibility artifacts, that should be okay. Because if you don't look at a very front prefrontal tip or either the lower uh, tempo bed. We still have two minutes and probably for those, um, this will conclude today's course. And I will highly encourage you to go through the assignment. The reason is like for the following three weeks, we will use this assignment data for differential tractography and correlational tractography. So this data set, the uh, spinal cerebral ataxia, this open data set will be used throughout the, the, the course uh, in the following week. So I highly encourage you to complete the assignment so that you can you can quickly um, know how to do it in 
in the core is like we we six or we seven. We'll use this one as an example here. For those who don't have a question, you can feel free to log off. Uh, others um, stay. I will stay for another thirty minutes to answer a question here. Or if you have data set that need to need troubleshooting, feel free to stay. So let me see the questions. After top of AD and long question, do we get only one image? Sorry, I didn't get Samisa's question. So here, the R SRC is just to tell the difference uh, in using a different file extension. Um, it's just a naming difference. It doesn't matter whether you put an R here or not putting an R here. Um, it's just to avoid confusion. Another question, in the case of a full test and both, both, can both as you be merged in the app? It is. So this correction step will merge both. So once you click on the correction top of AD, um, the top of step um, and AD, the top and AD step together will merge both data set into one. So you don't have to do the other way around. The both data set will be merged and estimate together. Hopefully that answers the questions. I see, for example, aligning both to MNI template with Kursa. Yes, yes. So, so if you have full data in both P direction, you create two SRC file. Usually I will rename one is RSRC. So you open the one of the SRC and then click on correction, top of AD, and then set it another SRC. And DSS Studio would, would make a part of correction and merge both two together. Then you just select QSDR and follow all the analysis. Both data set will come all together. Hopefully that answer question for James. Um, next question, can we use a question parameter as test files such as top up? Blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, sure. But it's not within DSS Studio. You have to code it in command line. So, and then you can do it and apply it to um, the tiny FSL package should be with DSS Studio. So if I can find an example here, So if you download, say for in Windows version, you will once you open a uh, download DSS Studio package, there's a folder called plugin. The plugin folder you will find top up over there. I don't even show you. I can show you quick here. So this one is the plugin folder that go with DSS Studio. You will see there are top up, AD and AD CUDA. Um, apply top up. Both you can call those using command line. So yes, if you have a acquisition parameter file, you could just use this parameter file and then use it as the script to call AD or top up. Um, but that's outside the SS Studio. You want to use a specific parameter file. The only way you could do right now is that you use just like how you use it in, uh, in FSL. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question, I said the four wrong answer is a drop up. Uh, so could we look at why it's not looking correct perhaps? Uh, yes, yes. So for that case, so how you could, um, are you going to upload the data or how are we going to, or are you going to share the screen? If you want to share, you can let me know. Um, let me know how it works. Uh, so Zach K. Yeah, Frank, I can I can share my screen if you want. Um, my yeah, internet. Sure, is sure. Right now, the the hurricane is right here where I'm. Where I'm, at. I'm sorry about it. I heard that the no, news is like. Uh, hopefully you're yeah. doing okay. So I see the power coming Let in and out. Let me unshare my screen so we can share yours. If I lose connection, don't worry. I'll I'll bother you next week. Um, okay, let me see if I can share. 
I'll share my full screen so you can see. Okay. Yes. So I have um, this patient and it's um, anonymized, so we can, we can share it here. And I have all of these files that we acquired. So I'm assuming that I was going to put in the, this one, the B2030 direction. Um, sorry, not this one. This one is trace DWI. Um, it's not the original diffusion weighted image. It, it already been processed as trace. Um, uh, so this one is the B1000. I guess I could use this one. Yes, I guess so. It should be this one. This is the FA. Yeah, FA being processed. So the FA trace or ADC, um, those are being processed. So, and they cannot be used here. The one you use. Oh, this one, this one. Yeah, maybe this one. That is the one you need, you can use. Yes. And then you you see the people, people coming in and click okay, then generate SRC file. Good. And then when okay. I do, I go to reconstruction and I use this source file. Yeah. Hopefully it works. And then should I do DTI just to see? Yeah, we can see. Check it, see if it works out. And then you would generate a FIP file. Yeah. And then when I go to fiber tracking and I use this FIP file. Okay. Let me see if something. See how it looks all distorted already? Yeah. Maybe the. Could you click on the fiber tracking? Let me look at the yeah, yeah. open tracking results. Okay, the B table is flipped. So look, let's go back to the step T2, the construction. You check the check B table. Oh, sorry. Oh. Problem. It, it's my, it's DSS Studio's problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, step, uh, T2. step T2. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is a check D B table. Step T2, B2. Yes, check B table. Okay. And then do it. And run it. Yeah. And then okay, let's look at the SS, uh, the fifth file. Let's click fiber tracking. Yep, it's much better. Oh, so what does that option do? The check B table? It thinks that the B um this different orientation convention or the BVAC file. And the more commonly FSO and, and DSS Studio will be flipped in the Y direction. And sometimes it could be different tool or different of orientation. So the B table will check whether the B table being flipped at a certain location. And then and then choose the one that DSS Studio thing would be the best. Okay, yeah, this looks much better. Cool. Did All right, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate no it. No problem. So Thanks let's head to the next question. Uh, where are we now? Uh, uh, okay. If I pass through your question, feel free to post it again. Right now, Linda, I try to run edit correction, but there's an error says blah, 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 blah. Okay, so here, this is asking for a, a, a CUDA file. Um, That's because you are running a GPU version, but you don't have CUDA toolkit installed. So one solution, there are two solutions. Go to DSS Studio website. Let me share my screen here. So for Linda's question, it happens when you use the GPU version, but you don't have the, uh, to use GPU, you need to install CUDA toolkit. So this this toolkit is pretty huge, um, but you will allow, DSS Studio to use GPU computation will be much faster. So see if you install this CUDA toolkit will solve the problem first. If installing this still doesn't work, maybe due to graphic cards not supporting or any issue, then you use the CPU version. But the CPU version will be much slower in some computation, especially for AD. 
um, the AD part would uh, have a lot of um, would have a lot of need that really need to use GPU. Hopefully, that answer your questions. Next one, Ricardo, you using a T1, does it help to correct top bar correction? There is a tool by Kurt Shitting at um, Vanderbilt. So they have a tool, I, I, I can't recall the name, but yes, there is a solution right now that is like you don't have reverse phase encoding, B0, then they could use, the tool could use T1, to create something that's, that's similar to the B0 and then use it for correction. So there's a solution I would say, but I, I haven't tested yet. Um, but maybe searching for, I, I forgot the keyword. Um, hopefully I can find it and then and then include it in, in maybe in the website or anything. But yes, there is a solution, but not included in DSS Studio. Next question, Anupa. I have a question regarding DTI matrix uh, QA. I have been using single shell data before once on for analysis. Yes, I saw significant quantity reduction in why matrix. Can I say the QA data? Due to, I would say, hmm, good question. So, for reduction of QA, I would say it's more, yes, I would say it's having a better argument that it's due to SNL damage or degeneration. Because I in if you use GQ DTI metrics like FA, FA is very sensitive to edema or tissue edema. So we will talk about this in next week's modeling course. The difference between FA and QA is QA is not is less affected by tissue edema, whereas FA is more affected. So if it, there is a condition, if the five meter track is still okay, but it start to have edema, start started to have formation, at that stage, FA will drop a lot, but QA is not dropping very much because the track is still there. Um, that's because they, if you have those formation condition, the FA will be, the relative CVT will be increased a lot due to edema, so FA will drop, but QA won't. However, if there is a severe damage, and in that case, it's not like just edema, or maybe with or without edema, then the QA start dropping. Um, so you will, will have more confidence to say there could be demyelination or osteonogenic degeneration than FA. So if you see a QA drop and also see a FA drop, then QA drop will be more specific to some damage or degeneration. Whereas the FA could be due to just edema, the S is still good, or either the same, the S is damaged. Hopefully I answer your question here. Next one. Can we take screenshot using the this comment in the cluster? If we have lots of subject, do we have? Unfortunately, it may not be possible because there's a strict screenshot through the this comment. I haven't tested, but my gut feeling is that it may not work. Um, it will give it a try. But what? The this comment here in DSS Studio is uh, it's bringing in the GUI interface and then calling the screenshot. So if your cluster supports um, the GUI interface, then it will work. Otherwise, it won't. But as far as I know, most of the cluster environment doesn't have GUI interface unless you specify like X11 or other GUI kind of pipeline to forward the, the interface. Otherwise, it may not work. I haven't tested it, but but it, it would need a lot of work to make, make it work. Any question here? Show screen to fix issue on fiber tracking. Uh, yes, sure. Anyone want to 
share screen feel free to do so uh so Somebody. yes i'm i'm sharing uh the screen now uh okay. the, the question will be uh, the question actually from the last uh, i mean uh your instruction for example if i have the question i want to check the left like a thalamus to the green matter precisely not crossing the area of thalamus but precisely starting from thalamus to the green matter or the cortex and how can we do it So you want to, if I understand why you want to start it from, or maybe I can show you how we should do for last week's assignment. Yeah, yeah, that could be also fine. Yeah, so that's probably like it, that way would work out. Let me share my screen here. You can, you can uh, stop sharing here so I can enable um, my screen. Yes. Yeah, the main question for me is like, although we can set a two ROI to identify the tracks crossing the area A to you know, the region A to the region B, but the fiber is not precisely starting and ending from these two ROI. Oh, I see. Then you assigned it as an end region? Yes, like a starting yeah. and ending. Yes. So the end. Starting and ending the same. It's just end to end. Usually yeah. we call it end to end. So you could use end region for both. Then hopefully that will work out. Say for example, like here. Um, how can I show you here? Let me see. If we like to start it, if you choose the end, and then uh, let's give it a try. So you see here the fiber will end here, or you can say it started from here. Uh, it seems that I cannot see your screen or not. So. Let me. Oh, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> sorry about it. Let me restart it. So here, I can draw a region. Previously, we use our eyes, so it could go through, right? Yes. So let me show you the difference here. So a lot of trade just going through, but you can turn this as end. That means it would start from there or ends in there. So you see here the fiber ends here. Hmm. Some maybe not. You see the, even this one's ending within. Oh, okay. Yeah, see here. It ends within. So switch from ROI to end will serve for your purpose. Did that answer um, your question here? Uh, yes, but if I want to identify the track between two ROI, then I just said this two ROI as end in terms of the tab, right? You're right, you're right. So oh. we can have two. Okay, uh, but if we can finally, I mean, achieve this aim, but how can we extract this specific track? It just, use these two ends and then create fiber tracking to your again, right? Uh, yeah, then how can we extract this tract? What do you mean by extract this tract? Yeah, for example, I want to identify a tract like between telomeres to the cortex to uh, calculate the potential diffusing metrics on this oh, tract. Oh, okay. So here, once you get a tract, mm -hmm. you go to the statistics and you see here, Along this track, there are like an isotopy, FA, all the all the index. Is that what you want to hear? Uh, yeah, but that's only for one example. But if I have one hundred ah, cases, I see. so then that the solution would be save along track index. This one, all right. So you would say you want to have DTFA and save it. Mm -hmm. Let's say like this test file. So it will save as a test file here. Then the test file would be, let me see if I can put it in. Um, will look like this one. So mm -hmm. each line will be a track and there are several coordinates along the track. And then for each coordinate, the FA value will be saved here. Mm -hmm. So essentially, that's all the FA 
value along this track from one side to another side. Oh, okay. Uh, but how can, can we use the command line to do this? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not sure if I can explore this in command line. Yeah, I mean, because for example, uh, we have 100 cases and we will identify 100 this kind of tracks, but we want to quantify a wide range of diffusion metrics and the to link see. this diffusion metrics to the, for example, the cognitive performance or anything else. I see. So this one, hmm. A long training test may not work, but one thing you could work is tracks profile. Then you could from the fiber orientation or Z direction. For this one, it's a, a different Z slice than this profile. This could be a, and this calculation could be done on command line. So mm. for profiling from one, from uh, different Z location. So to do it, let me point you the command line where it is. It's in the fiber tracking. Mm -hmm. Let me see that our setting here is port. So it could is port the port DTF801. So the FA value X direction. I mean so zero here means X direction. If you want to have Z direction, then this is two. So you could have is port report. DTFA two and the last one is oh okay here is the bandwidth so the bandwidth is like, yeah here where is most smooth or not so you could assign specific value to tell whether it's z direction or x direction or y direction or either fiber orientation from zero which should be the button to the top and then the bandwidth control how smooth it is and then you output test file of those values just the same as you save is reported data here uh, okay uh yeah okay i think I hopefully this work, works better um but for most of the application, if I understand right, you could um, week five and week six that like either differential chartography or corridor chartography may offer a better uh, results than this we call it a long trail analysis, which is more complicated and may not be sensitive enough. Um, just let you know. Yeah, uh, okay. And maybe one final question, but yes. how can we save this as a this identified track that into the nifty file. Okay, so one way to do it. Okay, what you could do is, I haven't tried it for a long time, but you can save current track track as nifty file. Ah, okay. And uh, then if, for example, with this uh, exported, uh, I mean, uh, nifty file, actually we can use the FL, FSL stats to maybe do more calculation regarding the diffusion metrics specifically. This can be another option, right? I haven't tried, but you can, you can give it a try. Yeah, FSL can read Nifty file, but I'm not sure which would work or not, but you can give it a try. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so any a new question here? Next one, the order of preprocessing step in motion followed by function is um, not really. So if you have any current correction, it already include motion correction. So you don't have to worry about motion correction. As you have mentioned in, in today's course, a bit, because I didn't mention how Eddy works, but the Eddy pipeline already include motion correction. Next one, Smitha, can you check the data? Just working on the. Yep, sure. You can share screen or you can send your data over and can open here, see which way it works for you. 
So Smitha, could you come in a little? Or you, which, or you, you say you have SRC and FIP file. You can send it to me using the upload link on the DSS Studio website, and I will receive it right away and open it here. Any any questions? So Samitha, are you still online? If yes, you could. Okay. Yep. If it's okay to check it right now, you can you can send it right now. Once I receive it, I can demonstrate how I, I can give a comment. Or either if you think the data is private, I can check it later. Any other questions or any things I can help? So Simisa, are you going to upload the data or you want to have it check separately now in today's sessions? Uh, can I have one more question, maybe? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, the question is regarding today's uh, instruction. Uh, so for doing the correction for the eddy currents or the head motion, do we have specific order to achieve this? For example, do we always do the head correct for correction for the head motion followed by the eddy currents, then the top up? And uh, what will be your recommended uh, like a sequence or order of this kind of correction? Yes. So the order is always top up followed by AD. Um, that's the, the, the best solution. Um, it won't be other way around. Um, if you don't have reverse phase encoding, then that's just AD. And the AD itself already include AD corrections and motion correction. Uh, you mean that the edit correction has included the head motion already? You are right. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I should. I I mi totally missed this point today, but I should have corrected it. But the way it works, like it also handles the head motion. Um, that's that's for sure. Thanks. Yeah, I should have mentioned that specifically. Okay, so Miss, I can share your screen. Let me unshare myself. Okay. Yes, I can see your data. You can unmute if you want. If you have microphone. Uh, hello. Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I would like to check my data. We haven't done any quality control for my data. We are using uh, the first time, using this for the first time. Okay, I can see that you see SCP protocol is the AP. So you want to do a quality control. Um, yes. What you can do is click on the first tab. To, so there's a click here to check raw data. Here in the quality control? Oh, you mean the quality control? Wait, wait a minute. Um, you mean it's step T1A? Yes. So this one only opens a folder, including the SRC file. So yes. usually we did this once we finish the uh, pre-processing, the AD or top up. But here, yeah, so you're actually doing the quality control and then you can- SRC you can report, okay. Uh, you can save to a new file. See you. 
You it's a test file and you can open it later. Okay. Yeah, this one I didn't, I, I forgot to mention this today is the, the quality control routine is step T1A. Yeah. Oh, um, I should, I, I will make it up next week, but I can show you how to do it. You can open that test file. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it here. Yeah, I, really, I because you yeah. share only DSS Studio. But if, yeah. if you check in the file, or maybe I can show how the the, the that files look at look the size on my end. Yes. I it's it's coming. It's coming. Okay. So here there it process it check for SRC file. Usually yes. what we look at is something called uh, neighboring D double correlation, which mm -hmm. has like the value of 0.8 is yes. very good. So usually Thank you. this value is pretty high. Um, if there is head motion or a huge eddy current artifact or distortion, then this value will be dropping. This value drops. Yeah. So, okay. and this so. studio will run outlier detection. Okay. Um, so if you say if you have a, a hundred subjects, you create a hundred SRC file, yes. and uh, this will go through all of them and detect which you may consider to drop it due to low quality. Okay, okay. So uh, the criteria is uh, the neighboring DW correlation should be greater than some value. Here it is 0 0.81, and if it drops to 0 0.5, can we use it? The way we work, work out is that we would use outlier detection. So that value will be a distribution, right? Okay. And you, um, we could use like MEDEPS or Python. There could be outlier detection routine. You can mm -hmm. give it a distribution of value and it can tell where are the outlier. And okay. DSS still actually do that. If you have a hundred subjects and if yes. there are outlier, this studio will show it. Okay. So in today's assignment, the S, uh, spinal cerebral test CR, there will be like 20 subjects. Yes. Um, the quality control step will figure out which have quality problem. Okay. Okay, we'll check that too. So I will make sure to cover this hopefully next week. Uh, yes. When I show the assignment part. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Sorry for missing that. Uh, do we need to check the FIB file too? Excuse do, me. Do, do we need to check the FIB files to uh, whether it is good or bad? Not needed. This is the the report itself is okay. You mean when you check the report? It well, this report is only for you to decide whether you this drop a case or not. Okay. Um, it's recommended to check it to check okay. this report. Okay. I, I always recommend to do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Before we finish, can I have one final question? Sure. Uh, yeah, so I have tried, as you have suggested, uh, to save the track into the Nifty file. It seems that, uh, yeah, it doesn't uh, make it. So it seems oh, that the default okay. export format is tt.gz, uh, I think. No, tt.nii. Then I cannot use, for example, the ITK snap to open it. Do you know how can we convert this format into the common Nifty format? I see. So, so you see my screen here? So once you have yeah. a track, um, uh, and now yeah. what you could do it is you say, for example, get the track here. Then you can use track to our Y. Attract to our Y. So it becomes an R Y. And then you can yeah. save it over there as an ET. Ah, okay, thanks. Got it. So the functions I like track to our or either endpoint to our Y, it's just converting endpoint. So you could try this one, see if that works out for you. Ah, okay, thanks. Many thanks. No problem. Um, no. Any other questions?
at the moment, you know, I think I will see you next week. And I really sure, appreciate- sure. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you have a question, you can also feel free to email me, and then I can I will continue next week. I will start it, end it here, and thank you everybody for the participation.